Hafede, and welcome to another round of the interview. Decision 2024 still ramping up, and we're going to continue now our round of interviews with the candidates for Guam's delegate. And joining us in studio right now is Congressman James Moylan Hafede. Hafede, Nick, it's good to talk to you. You know, I know you've enjoyed our in interviews before, and I'm looking forward to more of them. But, you know, our, we have been busy, yeah. uh, and I'm glad to be home. Let me just tell you. I was going to say you're enjoying um, the warmer weather. I sure <laughs> am. It feels so good. You get that humidity right when you get out of the, the plane here. It's like, oh, this feels good. So I'm happy to be home. I feel like that's the nostalgia that everyone gets, especially when they talk about first arriving on island. So I totally yeah. get that. Yes. So, uh, Congressman, thank you for your time again. Uh, first off, let me just have you go ahead and talk a little bit about uh, your path and your journey towards getting to where you are today in elected office. Uh, well, 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 thanks. And, it's, and it has been a journey, right? Mm -hmm. And I think it's all started uh, just being a public servant. Uh, something I've, I've done and in high school and growing up too, but most importantly, what I've done most recently, and that's my previous uh, job as senator. Mm -hmm. That experience of a few years doing that uh, greatly prepared me for this position today that I'm in. Uh, public service is really rewarding and it's very challenging too. What I think what I were able to learn uh, with, my, with my team here was the importance of listening to people and as a senator, uh, being able to take what we learned and what was need to be done for the island and bring it to the House floor. Learn how to write measures. Learn how to deal with your colleagues. Learn how to get measures pre uh, passed. And we focused on a lot of good things as a Senate at that time was about job creations, about the economy, and how to, how to keep our island growing mm -hmm. in a safe and a protected way. So that was my progression is starting as, as a public service, working my way up, getting elected was something else, you know? It's just, it's amazing what you, you, you need to do. You need to put yourself out there, but, but it's important uh, in order to get that. The people had to trust and believe in you. Mm -hmm. And I think we showed that as in our Senate position. And now when the position of Congress opened up, we did the same thing. My team is, uh, was prepared because I, I would not take this without the experience if I didn't have the experience that I had. I think the job is too important to go in there with not enough knowledge and not prepare with a great team. And I believe we showed that we are ready and we have done so uh, with what we've done thus, thus far. Mm -hmm. So, you know, the work has just begun. Eh? And now I'm, I need to do, I need to take it further. We're just scratching the surface mm -hmm. and I want to take this job further because we built some great relationships and that experience from Senate, taking that forward and moving it into Congress. We just started. Do you ever think back though, uh, along your journey to, to the time where it was Jim Moylan before the Senator, before when you were just <laughs> in, in private, in the private sector, do you ever think back to those moments and wonder how it could have gone any other, uh, any other way? Uh, I wasn't sure if this is where I should be, you know, yeah. you kind of just, but things move in that direction, right? And um, prior to being a senator, I was in ins insurance business for mm -hmm. just 20, 20 plus years. But I knew, I listened to the people, right? And we knew the products that we needed to provide for our customers. We needed, we knew the services we needed to provide for our customers too. I had prior experience before that. Uh, with Department of Corrections and parole office. I was really concerned about public safety and how we need to protect our citizens here on Guam and how we need to rehabilitate and how we need to provide jobs and a building economy and a good outlook uh, to give jobs, to provide finances so you can put food on your table and not, not have all these stresses going on. With, and, and that was important too. Prior to that, oh, where was I? I think I was in the military, right? Yeah. <laughs> and serving our nation yeah. as well. So basically I, I could see it as a progression. Public service for our nation as a soldier, public service uh, for our island and the government as, as a parole officer to uh, graduating into uh, 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 insurance business, public service for our customers and uh, in private enterprise, and then public service into Senate and now here I am today. So one door continues to open each time and with the right people surrounding you with a good team uh, then the confidence is there to move it forward from serving the nation protecting the nation defending them to now serving in the nation's capital oh. uh, i can't wait to hear more <laughs> next up we're going to ask you a bit more on your platform right. this time around as we continue on the campaign trail but we're gonna take a quick break let's do that the interview mm -hmm. the interview will be back in a moment
Welcome back to the interview. Let's continue in our interview speaking with Congressman James Moylan. He is the lone GOP, yeah. the lone Republican. That's right. At the time of this interview, at least, yeah. on the ticket to be Guam's <laughs> delegate, half a day. Half a day. And, and yes, I am the uh, lone Republican. And, and when I first, uh, we were looking at taking this position and, and running as a Republican, I, I did go around to my colleagues in the party thinking of who may be interested uh, just to see. Uh, if that's something we need to discuss further. But it came down to where we, the party and, and my colleagues and uh, Republicans decided, Jim, we're gonna back you. Mm -hmm. And today, that's the same situation as well. I may have, uh, on the Democrat side though, I understand there are more than one uh, running. Mm -hmm. And let's see who wants to battle out to come if, uh, and challenge this incumbent. You know? So I'm looking forward to that. But most importantly, I'm really focused on getting continuing the work. It's, it, it, it's just begun. And, and uh, I, I am running for re-election, of course. I did pick up my packet uh, yesterday. Mm -hmm. uh, so just uh, my office went on down there to pick it up. No, no big fan show. No, nothing, right? Because, because we're busy working. If we're gonna, if we're gonna continue this job, which I'm asking the people of Guam to give me an, a, a continuation, another two term, another term, then I better show the work that I've. I've been doing. I have so short of a time on Guam when I do arrive, mm -hmm. and I'm so happy to be home. Yeah. <laughs> the warmth gets right to your heart. It's coming from the weather as you exit, exit the plane yeah. to the people you meet. Huh? Really? And so that, that really helps out. So that's what we're doing. So no fanfare on um, picking up our packet. We will turn it on in, and I am running again as well. Time really flies because it feels like we just that you were just elected into yes. this office <laughs> um, but I want to talk more about your platform this time around sure um, you know but we focus as senator uh, and now we're bringing that step bigger to Congress it's about local businesses it's mm. about the economy it's about uh, job creation we're continuing that uh, right now as well at, at the scale in Congress where we can really help. Mm -hmm. we, in Senate, we, we work to reduce taxes. We work to uh, reduce taxes on, on fuels and, and weights and measurements and, and uh, uh, licensing as, as well to build that. Same things we're, we're doing in Congress too. We see that as an important thing. And we had to have, for, for Guam, if you want businesses to grow, you have to have a resilience in your, in your infrastructure. And that's very important and we've been taking that further, uh, working with the administration, working with the governor's office, working, we just have meetings with uh, JB uh, mm -hmm. and other utilities and other agencies on the island. How can the federal government help support our local government and these agencies? And we're, we're doing that right now through the relationships we build in, with my colleagues in, in Congress. That resiliency is important. We're gonna get hit by another typhoon. Hopefully it's another 30 years. We're gonna be hit by another disaster, but, but the strength, uh, the strength of our people but, and the strength of our infrastructure is important. We're working with Department of Defense. We're working with FEMA. Uh, we're, we're working with other agencies and, and they know what we need. And Indo-Pacom area uh, situation, which I'm a part of uh, in, uh, by working with the House Armed Services Committee, a, important committee for a member to be on, especially in Guam, we are able to relay our voice there. This is what the, we understand the importance of our, our nation needs, mm -hmm. uh, then the importance that the nation needs to protect the citizens of Guam, United States citizens mm -hmm. of Guam, and our free associated uh, members of free associated states that do live here as well. Protect the people, protect the nation, protect Guam, you're protecting the United States of America and the freedom that we have. So that, that's um, very important to us, the resilience as well. And, and when you're doing that, we need a workforce, right? Yeah. We, we, got, we, we were able to push really hard and we got $3.3 3 billion. That's almost triple the amount of money that we had for, for our buildup than before, yeah. than the prior 117th. But we did it. And now how are we gonna spend that? We need H2B workers. We were at a position where these H2B workers were not only going to last one more year. Disastrous. You can't have a contractor come in, in there and say, I've got a million dollar contract, I've got it two years. It's going to take me two to five years to get this done. 
how can I rely on my workforce if I, if I can't get it extended for a period? Mm -hmm. We fought, we worked together with Department of Defense, we worked together uh, with our local administration. The voice was clear all across, and when we brought that to the table, we got a pass. Extension for five years. It, but that's not enough. To mm -hmm. us, our team, we know we're gonna extend that even more. We wanna push that even further. So that, that's important. You get local businesses going. You get the resilience of your, your infrastructure. You get workers to put, put that all together. You get the money to put it, to make it happen too. But I'm also a vet. Mm -hmm. And I had a meeting with veterans the other day too. And the struggles that they have uh, in their claims and the processing and getting the denials, it's just wrong. The processing time taking six to seven months, that's gotta stop. We have measures in place uh, to make things better. Our nation uh, has got this far because of the people who served. And if we're gonna continue that, we need more people to serve. And without the veterans advocating, join the service son, join the uh, service daughter, join the, join the service uh, citizens, it's not gonna happen. So veterans are important to me as well. Okay, well said. Thank you. We'll talk a little bit more about some of the goals I have uh, planned for should you succeed in this race and make it on to your second term. Great. Take another break. We're back with more interview in a moment. Welcome back to the interview. Continuing our interview now with Congressman James Moylan. Half a day. Half a day. So you, you, you still had more. I see the list you have you brought in yes. today <laughs> that you wanted to discuss with regard to your platform. But I also want to hear some of the goals that you have uh, for the people should they vote for you a second term. Sure. Uh, let me let me uh, start off by talking more about the vets. Uh, I'm I'm a vet. I mentioned that. Uh, we had uh, several meetings with uh, veterans organizations uh, just the other day also. We had a big uh, presentation. This is the year of the veterans as well. I was there with the, the administration, the governor, the lieutenant governor, and myself presenting. But for Congress on our side, we had to push for measures where our vets are, are struggling with, where the people of Guam are struggling with uh, as well. Agent Orange, right? We were able to expand the, the time frame on, on who's elig the eligibility for this, and that's very important. There's also the measure about RECA. Mm -hmm. There, that we push for that, we push for that in Congress. It got higher than it ever did before. It didn't make it all the way, but the fight is still continuing on uh, the, the, uh, with the House and with Senate side too. We have that relationship. We need to provide for the funding, and that's where we're working to get as well. So let's take care of our vets. Let's take care of the people of Guam and let's move these things further. Just one of my goals, but, but there are several goals. And when I started, uh, let me say, the goal was to make sure you have a great relationship with your colleagues. Mm -hmm. You just don't go walking on in there and say, hey, I want this, this, and this, and this. And they're gonna say, you're who? From where? You know, you're the new funny. guy in this. I'm sense. the new guy. <laughs> you know, I'm, I'm the new guy. I said, let me, let me tell you who I am. But I built the friendships. Mm -hmm. I, I started, we had a, a book of, of all of our uh, new members, mm -hmm. right? It's like a little yearbook freshman class, I went around with that book and said, hey, this is you, you're from, hey, pleasure to meet you. Do you mind signing on your picture? They did that. So I built that friendship with my, with my new uh, colleagues, the, the freshmen, freshmen there, Republican and Democrat too. And then I built that relationship with the uh, seniors. Mm -hmm. Now, I just want to say that, uh, how do you get to know these seniors? Well, you look them up too, but, but I, had, I had the opportunity, I got a call from Madeline Berdalio when I got elected, and she said, Jim, I want you to go, go meet my friend, Joe Wilson. Okay. I'm going to tell him you're going to come and see him. Sure enough, I looked for that guy on the floor. He said, hey, you know, I'm Jim Wilson. Hey, you know, Madeline Berdalio goes, yeah, I know her. She's a great person. He said, I want to be on your committee. He's second in line at the House Armed Services Committee. He introduced me to Mike Rogers, our, our the committee chairman. Yeah. Uh, since that time, that relationship built and built and built. We have Mike Rogers out here um, for, for congressional delegation. You don't get that unless you have the relationship. You don't get to talk about your agenda unless they can trust you. Mm -hmm. If they don't trust you, there's 400 other representatives in the House. Everybody is vying for the same amount of money. How are we gonna do that? Well, you gotta make your voice that they want to listen to you. So we built those relationships. That's how we got the $3 billion. That's how we got the H2B passed. That, that's how we're going to 
with this money coming on the end, this is going to circulate in the general fund so we can provide the services for the people of Guam, mm -hmm. education, public safety, and uh, public health as well. There's, there's more to come. There's more that, that got, has to get done. So we're going to continue on with these challenges. Uh, speaking of, right, the, uh, we had a field hearing here on Guam for yes. COFA. We have representatives from the free associated states here at our hotel down, down, in, uh, down here in Tumon. Mm -hmm. this, this was broadcast uh, on C-SPAN in the house uh, in Guam, mm -hmm. right? That's, that's, that's historic, but that brought that attention. And then we go back to DC, and then uh, just the other month, or not too long ago, the governor came on out with um, uh, Jesse Alley, representing the mayors, to talk about the importance of Guam's needs for COFA funding to continue. We, we had to fight for that really hard because it, it wasn't done previously. Mm -hmm. And here we are, and now we're fighting for that. That's a challenge I have a, as well. And that's why I want to continue on as a representative to see this through. You know, and I gotta continue to make that, that happen. There's other things, medical portability that's mm -hmm. there, SSI that's there, uh, a, a lot more things. Oh, our, our borders, Yeah. Guam Customs is in charge of our borders, but they don't have the resources to do that. The federal government is placing demands, uh, unfunded mandates upon the Guam Customs Authority. If you're gonna do that, the federal government, you better assist. You better provide training, you better provide services, you better provide bullets even, right? That, that's, let's do this right. And if we had to federalize it, then we federalize it. If we're gonna give more funding, then we give more funding. But that discussion has begun. And that's why I want to continue on. The resources are always important, always a need and a must, but also building those bridges and those networks, like you were saying, essential. Yes. Okay, uh, any, anything else you wanna add before we take another break? Yeah, you know, I find this job really exciting. And the more I hang around with my colleagues, it, it just, it becomes uh, like we're classmates, like mm -hmm. we're, 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 we're good to go with each other. No, there's not everybody I can agree with. You know, just like in class, it's like, oh my gosh, why is this person still in my class? Gee whiz. <laughs> But, but you move on yeah. and you focus on those that, that have the same heart, the same mind, the same drive you do, and you get them here in the same belief. I have, we have advocates at, advocating for Guam as senior congressional men when they're walking down the halls in Congress, when they're talking about uh, their, uh, their things on the floor, they mention Guam too. Whenever Guam's in the spotlight, we love to see it. All right, right, we're gonna take another break and wrap up the show in a moment. Thank you. Uh, more of the interview when we return. Welcome back to the interview. Congressman James Moylan, half a day. <laughs> half a day. Well, it's been a pleasure speaking with you and yes. good luck on the race. Oh, thank you very much. I'm, uh, you know, when you're running for election, it, you always have this uh, things like, oh, here we go again. You know, <laughs> <laughs> I, didn't I just yeah. start on this job? And now we're talking about election. Congress, though, it's like Senate, and like what I experienced in Senate. It's just a two year period. You know, but it, interesting, except for Puerto Rico. They got theirs for a four-year period. I think that's something we need to get done. I think we need to get you know, something. You, we had such a long, it, it's a long drive to get to DC. Yeah. And if you're gonna make me go, uh, we, and I enjoy going back and forth, well, to a certain extent, but, but uh, I'd rather focus on, on just getting the job done. And for this first year, we really came out there, pushed really hard, uh, met the people, uh, built the friendships, mm -hmm. got into those committees, House Armed Services, got into the subcommittee of readiness, really important for the island of Guam, and personnel too. Mm -hmm. uh, got into the committee of uh, natural resources uh, and, uh, and subcommittees as well. We were able to sit at the table when the final negotiation was done, uh, the, uh, the agreement made for the administration, the White, uh, yeah. the White House and, and the Free Associated States, and then it came before our subcommittee. Really Im important to get done. So I'm very honored to have that opportunity to, to serve, right? And, and to be part of this is amazing experience. And I'm, you know, I'm kind of enjoying it. Yeah. <laughs> you know, you kind of get this. I hear it, you're saying two years is just not it's enough. It's just not enough, yeah, it's just not enough. And once you get in the swing of it, once mm -hmm. you know how to uh, uh, throw that ball or bat that ball or catch that ball, you know, I even have the opportunity to sit uh, as acting uh, Speaker Pro Temp. Mm -hmm. for over 10 times 
Uh -huh. And I hit that gavel. I said, it is the opinion of the chairman that the eyes have it and this measure is moving forward. Uh, incredible, right? Yeah. Or just to, to stand in, in the congressional halls and the huge flag of the United States and we start with a pledge. Incredible feeling. And above that it says, in God we trust. Incredible. Right? It's that sense of pride. Yes, right? yes. And representing the island and building that respect uh, to know it is very important in Congress. No doubt. Uh, was there any other goals that you uh, you want the public to know about? Because I do want you to address the voters in just a moment. But before we get there, I you know there, there's a lot more that needs to get done. Uh, mm -hmm. My goal is with COFA, the fight, uh, working closely with this administration. We're united to get things done. If if you can't work closely with the administration, there's only one voice voice in Congress. Mm -hmm. And we had to trust each other that we're doing the right thing for the people of Guam. And that's being set and moved forward. If you have two different opinions between uh, federal side and administrative side, the United States Congress has a lot of the other things to worry about if we're not united. Mm -hmm. I can tell you, I, I may agree with not everything, mm -hmm. but I'm sure the right things that we got going has, is, is moving us forward working closely with the administration, working tightly with the agencies here on Guam, and, and being out there, being transparent for the people of Guam. To, having a great interview with you, Nick. You know, Thank that's, you. That's, that's important. So the people know, and I come back as much as possible, because that presence in DC, uh, I'm gonna tell you a some, little something funny. Okay. You know, I, I get my doctor's checkups all the time. I do my exercises. I'm in good shape. But he says, you're lacking one thing. Of, what is that? He said, vitamin D. He said, oh my gosh. You know, uh, the, well, being in Washington, D.C., mm -hmm. and it's taking away my vitamin D, mm -hmm. I want to be home more often. So I'm making it a point. I come home as much as possible. So, yeah. and that's important. And so I can talk with the people of Guam. When I get back home, I have coffee with your congressman. We, we go to the different coffee shops and you know, just sit on down and you know, join me one day to enjoy some coffee. You be my, you're my constituent, right? Yeah. I work, I work yeah, for yeah. you. You're, I need to hear what's important to you. So let, let's have coffee. And I, I invite the, uh, our constituents out there too. Let's, let's have coffee together. We make that announcement. We put that flower on out there. Yeah. And I, I need to hear more people of Guam. Because that warmth from the people, the warmth of the island really helps me when I go back there, so at least I can get some vitamin D, take that with me and bring it back home too. <laughs> <laughs> too bad you can't just pack it up every no. time you travel, right? <laughs> That's okay. right. On that note, Congressman, if you can just look into your camera right over here and give a message, whatever you want to say to the voters. Uh, people of Guam, I thank you for this opportunity to have served you for this term. I have one more year to go and there's a lot more to get done. The work has just begun. I understand my role. I, I, I've made the contacts in Congress. I've established good friendships. I was able to do the agenda. We work really hard. We were able to bring three congressional delegations to Guam. There's other staff delegations that have come as well. And that's because they trust the people of Guam, because the trust is rebuilt in, in Congress and will continue to grow too. There's a lot more that I had to get done. I'm willing to put up the fight. I'm willing to work for you, and I'm humbly asking for your support that I may run for a second term as well. So I just want to say God bless the United States of America. I want to say God bless Guam, and God bless the veterans as well. Viva Guam, and please consider me for a second term in Congress. God bless. Congressman, thank you so much for your time. I really appreciate it. And this is not the last we're going to be speaking with you along the campaign trail as well. So we look forward to hearing more and witnessing it as well. Thank you so much. You're very welcome. Pleasure. Nick. All right. We'll see you there. Okay. Thank you so much for joining us for the interview. Take care.